an aspiring physician and medical anthropologist, my goal is to map urban genomes. Now, what does that mean, mapping the urban genome? It means that uh, for the past two years, uh, we have gone out into the subway system to, uh, with nylon swabs like this, to create a comprehensive molecular portrait of the mass transit system. And this means that we found uh, meningitis in, in Midtown, we found uh, uh, stomach flu in, in the financial district, and we've also found antibiotic-resistant infections in all five boroughs of the city. Um, you know, it's, it's really quite fascinating to see the, the microbial and genetic dynamics of the population at such, a, at such a microscopic level. Another thing that's really interesting about the study is that the New York City subway system is you know, a fascinating urban ecosystem teeming with microbial life. And we found f over 15,000 different life forms. Um, and again, we found uh, bacteria associated with food poisoning, mozzarella cheese, um, kimchi and sauerkraut, and staph infections. And, you know, it's not just about, uh, you know, kind of looking at the microbes that interface with us on a daily basis, but it's also looking at uh, the, the people themselves who inhabit the cities around us. And these kinds of molecular portraits are revolutionary in that they, give up, they provide us with a glimpse into the ethnic ancestry of the people who are... Uh, you know, riding these subways. So we were able to recapitulate the U.S. Census data for New York City um, by uh, looking at the human DNA that we found in the subway system. So I'm going to show you a brief clip of um, uh, an excerpt of a video from National Geographic detailing our swab ventures into the bowels of, of the subway system. So Pathomap is a project to examine the longitudinal microbiome or the bacteria on the surfaces across the New York City subway system. We wanted to look at just what's there and no one really knew. So we just started swabbing and then sequencing everything we could see. So we did the train uh, and then two places at the station, usually a bench or the turnstile, some of the garbage cans or the kiosk. This covers all approximately 656 miles of the New York City subway system and all of the over 30,000 different sort of turnstiles. One of the, the real goals is to know very well what baseline and normal looks like. So if we did see an aberrant species or bacteria, we could know that it is different enough to be able to react to it. So now we've gone global. So now that we've published our data set and made it public, um, we've uh, we've gone global, and that's exactly the purpose of the Medisub International Consortium. Uh, we've grown to include over 39 cities from across, uh, spanning six continents from across the globe, and it's one of my core responsibilities to uh, coordinate logistics between the different hub laboratories so that they can also map their city genomes as precisely as we did here in New York City. Um, I actually had gone to uh, Hyderabad, India this past summer to set up a collaboration collaboration with folks at the University of Hyderabad so that they could map their mass transit system there. And, you know, what's very interesting about this is that um, as opposed to New Delhi's mass transit system, which has been in operation for quite some time, Hyderabad is just opening to the public uh, in December. So it's going to be a new, fledgling, uh, brand new baby mass transit system, and it's going to be interesting to compare and contrast the, da the data sets that we, that we accrue from there. Um, now, what are the tangible implications of such a study, and what exactly are we trying to do with this? Um, you know, in our minds, it, it just kind of came out of curiosity. Again, it's, it's about kind of knowing what kinds of, you know, microbial populations are there on the surfaces that we interface with on a daily basis. But, it, you know, it also has tremendous implications for things like bioterrorism threat mitigation and setting up uh, new uh, health management and disease surveillance systems in a way that can improve upon already existing public health uh, frameworks. Um, Metasub is actually a, an acronym that stands for Metagenomics and Meta Design of Subways and Urban Biomes. And we not only want, we envision not only just focusing on uh, mass transit systems, but also public parks, waterways, uh, the, the very streets that we walk on, even the buildings that we live in. It, it's really an amazing study because of the, the potential it has uh, for 
you know, where we can take it. I mean, me the field of metagenomics in and of itself is a fledgling field. It's something that um, not many researchers have done a lot of research on, and it's, it's, it's quite revolutionary in that we can expand on it and take it in any direction in which we choose to. Um, I think the other thing that really struck me about this study for the past two years is the fact that it really does transform the way we think about public space and, this, and, and the physical environment around us and how the environment directly impacts our health and the bacteria that we're exposed to on a daily basis. It truly is the environment that determines our exposure to certain kinds of bacteria as opposed to others. And that was one of the micro studies that I had done within the project about whether there is a correlation with um, the, like uh, um, hospital acquired infections and geographic proximity to subway stations. And unfortunately, we didn't find a, uh, a correlation there, but we do hope to uh, you know, broaden this to all 39 different hub laboratories around the world. So this is a website that we had created and we're actually launching our joint Kickstarter campaign. Uh, my principal investigator, Dr. Christopher Mason, is giving a talk on metagenomics in space um, uh, in TEDMED this I think it was this th this morning, actually. So we're going to be going global this today um, to kind of inaugurate uh, our um, our joint TED talks. So please do check out our website there. Um, but another thing that uh, that comes to mind here is the fact that this study is really about also transforming the paradigm in which tr traditional disease reporting takes place. Usually it's very unidirectional and um, kind of hierarchical, and there's a reason for that, obviously, but digital disease detection, on the other hand, makes um, this kind of public information available to the masses, and it's more on a level playing, uh, on a level playing field. Um, laboratories, the public, healthcare workers, ministries of health, and world bodies like the World Health Organization can all interface with one another using this kind of data, especially if it's open to the public. Broadly speaking, city living leaves its mark on people and that includes the kinds of microbes that collect inside of them. Um, a recent comparison of, herbal, of urban and rural residents in Russia uh, showed that uh, city dwellers had a completely different set of stomach microbes than, uh, than rural residents. And out of the 15,000 different life forms we found, uh, almost half of that DNA matched harmless bacteria. Um, this is all really quite interesting because it it points to the idea that the human microbiome is, you know, it's an essential mediator to human health. That, and to illustrate this point, I'm going to give you a staggering statistic. Um, every single person in this, in this auditorium right now, and every single person on the face of this earth, um, is home to approximately 100 trillion microbial cells, um, bearing 5 million different genes, and really totaling approximately five pounds of your total body weight. So I'm 100 pounds, that means five pounds of my 100 pounds are just microbes. And, you know, that's really fascinating to me because it shows that our microbiome and the composition of our environments completely uh, determine our health outcomes um, and our exposure to certain illnesses and, you know, it, it's really quite interesting in that way. So as an increasing number of scientists probe urban microbiology, they're also hoping to find ways to foster bacteria uh, through building design and construction materials. Um, so in Oregon, I know that there are researchers who are uh, investigating the different microbes that inhabit densely populated classroom buildings. Uh, in Vermont, uh, there are a number of different researchers who are investigating the microbial uh, the life of plumbing and water pipes. And in Chicago, there are a bunch of researchers who are looking at um, the composition of microbes in healthcare, in, in clinical, setting, in clinical settings, um, setting the precedent for something we like to call precision metagenomics, which is mirroring President Obama's initiative on, on precision medicine. And, the next logical step for this would be to uh, kind of open this up to mass gatherings around the world. So in summer 2016, we have a number of different uh, labs, hub laboratories around the world who are going to be mapping the microbiome of uh, 
the Summer 2016 Olympics. So, we're going, so with people from all over the world, we're going to have citizen scientists go out and swab the stadium and the arenas and the, the transit systems that go into and out of the system to, before, during, and after the Olympics to see uh, the, micro, the changing microbial and genetic dynamics of, 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 of the environment around us. I mean, and, and this would be fascinating. I find this fascinating because we can expand this to different kinds of, of, of gatherings around the world. So as a Muslim woman in science, I would uh, propose uh, mapping the microbiome of the Hajj uh, in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. For Hindus, it would be the, the Kumilla in, in India. And for Catholics, it would be going to Rome, you know, to see, to see the Pope. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a really tremendous uh, field. It has a lot of potential, and you can take it in any, in any direction you want it to you want it to go, really. So um, thank you for listening, and I hope you learned quite a bit. Thank you.